Thank you. Uh, at the May 4th meeting, council approved having all public comment occur during citizen communication except for public hearings. Persons who registered to speak under multiple items will be allowed to speak multiple times. We will continue this practice unless any council member wants to make a motion to go back to having public comment on resolutions and ordinances separately. Is there anybody wishing to make such a motion? Seeing no request to make a motion, we'll proceed to citizen comment. Per council policy, citizen communication is the time on our agenda for the public to address council on business and affairs of the city. The city council is not able to hear any comments at this time on land use matters that are before or may become before council. Please reserve such comments for the appropriate public hearing. As a reminder, council must wait until administrative council business to take action in response to citizen communication. The city required advanced registration in order to participate in citizen communication for this meeting. If you are currently in this meeting to speak during citizen communication, please listen for me to call your name and the clerk will unmute you so you may begin. If you do not respond or are disconnected, you may miss your chance to comment. Please give your name and address for the record and keep your comments limited to three minutes. Thank you. First on the list is Darcy Nelson. Darcy, if you are one of the attendees, please hit star nine on your phone or use the raise hand function and we'll get you unmuted. Mayor, I do not see Darcy Nelson in the meeting. Thank you. Next is Shana Oliver. Shana, if you could hit star nine on your phone or uh, use the raise hand function and we'll unmute you. Looks like she is the 421. All right. Shana, you are unmuted and you'll have three minutes once you begin. Hi, um, again, my, my name is Shana Oliver, and I am um, I am looking for a place, and all the places that are listed for appropriate affordable housing seems to be in Commerce City in Adams County, but I don't like how you guys are promoting um, development of oil and gas near the single-family homes that most uh, people that are looking to to buy houses are being forced to be in these areas that you are proposing these plans for. And I don't appreciate that you disregard the the health impacts that are, or the environmental impacts that are known hazards for these um, developments. And especially when the market is not even um, appropriate to keep continuing these plans with oil and gas development at this state of the market that is current at, currently at. And I think it's very um, disregarding of your council to not inform all residents of Commerce City and Adams County of what you are doing about oil and gas development and how you're not really implementing um, safeguards for people before pushing your agenda through. Um, I think you should really be paying attention to the science base behind um, the Im environmental impacts of oil and gas development in today's environment. And it, it's really not financially um, stable for this council to keep um, supporting oil and gas development in Adams County when you already have um, problems of, of providing clean access to water to all these homes that live in Commerce City, as well as there is not adequate um, accountability of air quality. And you should think about those things before pushing oil and gas development in areas where new people tend to um, buy their homes. Thank you. Next on the list is Rana Sanchez. Hello. Rana, you're unmuted and you'll have three minutes once you begin. 
Okay, Rana Sanchez, 10680 Waco Street in Commerce City. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to address you. I have two areas to discuss. The first is the proposed resignation agreement with the city manager. Could you please explain to me why it's necessary to offer a separation package of approximately $200,000, and I am including benefits, to a person who's resigning? I've never heard of such a thing. Nine months of pay, ridiculous. The city council was accused of wasting money on the Mayor Huseman investigation, but that was only about $15,000, and at least you got a report for your money. This is a $200,000 expense, and we will receive nothing. <clears throat> Could you please justify this to me and the rest of Commerce City? Second, are you going to continue working with Extraction Oil now that they have declared bankruptcy? How do you expect them to meet any of the financial obligations outlined in the agreement with them? We tried to warn you that the oil and gas industry was not solvent anymore, but you had to go ahead and do business with them. I hope you're going to cancel any agreement you have with them at the very least. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Christy Douglas. I see Steve Douglas on the line. Steve, I'm assuming. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, Christy, you're unmuted and you have three minutes once you begin. All right. Hi, I'm Christy Douglas. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm a resident of Commerce City. Um, I watched the study session um, on June 8th, last Monday night, and um, I was concerned once again watching um, that uh, meeting. And I guess what I'd like to say about that is that the oil and gas presentation uh, really bothered me more than anything else. And it, it seemed like uh, the industry concerns were more important than the residents. And that to me is really upsetting. The other thing that I found really upsetting was that there was one council person in particular who um, just seems to want to get this over and done with and off their plates. And I want you to understand how important this is. This is your job to um, make good decisions and take everything into consideration and, and not feel like you just wanna rush through this. This is going to be so impactful and, and it's something that needs to be really, really, looked at and all aspects need to be considered before any moves are made. Um, I didn't like the way that uh, Councilwoman Ellen Thomas was attacked for being concerned about the Senate Corps for her constituents. I really didn't think that was appropriate at all. Um, and then in light of all the business that we're proposing to do with extraction of oil and gas and their financial, current financial status, um, I am going to ask you that you consider a moratorium. We are not protected as some of the council people have said that we are because nobody's come planning on coming in, but that's not good enough. We need a moratorium. It needs to be at least six months and it needs to be done soon. So please take this stuff seriously. This is the future of Commerce City. What is your legacy? What is your legacy here? That's all I have to say, but please consider doing a moratorium. It needs, it needs to be enacted and it needs to be done soon. Thank you. Thank you. Last on the list is Steve Douglas. Can you hear me? Uh, you, should, yep, you should still be unmuted and you'll have three minutes once you begin. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council, for allowing us this time to uh, make comments. Uh, my first comment is um, the, pre the presentation regarding the extension for the reunion sales and use tax reimbursement agreement. 
Now back in, uh, let's see, last year, I think it was March 4th, 2019, um, there was an ordinance approving the Buffalo Hills Ranch reunion PUD zone documents, and that included um, several zonings from what, zoning two, three, th two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, I voted no on that, um, but they did sh state and show to us that they were not using any of these, any of the 30, um, the 33% of the 3.5% that the city had agreement from, from 2000 to now to 2020 was a 20 year agreement. So I advise you to vote against that because the current council does not have enough information to actually approve that or even bring that forward for a vote. Uh, the second one is uh, the comprehensive plan with Halcia Levine Associates to provide a comprehensive plan update. Now I know our comprehensive plan back in 2019, uh, comprehensive plan, transportation plan and PRG plan, economic development plan was budgeted for $965,000. And that's what they say the party would take in order to, to do this. This is, comes in at 717,000. But in the wake of the um, hunting building um, not being approved because of the pandemic, not only that, last year we had a February 2nd, 2019, the possibility of recession, here we are. So I think the, the new council needs to really have an overview because the last, I say four months have, you know, city's been through a pandemic, nothing's been going on, no study sessions. Um, None of council members have been informed, even, even the ones who've been there for two years, as far as informing the other council members. So to put this on a consent agenda is, is a slap in the face to the citizens. Um, and then number three, there's a, 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 a second opportunity for Reunion Metro District to negotiate during the executive session to end in the council meeting. So please consider um, that there has no, no prior history or information or any study session related to this topic for the prior council. Um, please understand we're probably in a 20 to $25 million are already behind in our, for our, our budget year for sales and use tax. And, um, you know, we got to figure out what that's going to be. So please don't make another mistake. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Members of the public were also able to submit comments online and by mail. No written comments were received by the deadline. If anyone wishes to speak at a future council meeting, please check the meeting agenda and city website for information on how to register or submit written comments. Next on the agenda is presentations. We'd like to invite the deputy city manager to provide an update on the city's overall response to the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple, a few uh, opening remarks and then I'll turn it over to uh, the other staff members to present their, their part of the presentation. Um, staff has been working on reopening uh, operations at various facilities. Um, that has gone well at the recreation centers and at uh, the civic center so far. Uh, it's uh, it's been fairly complex just because of the variety of programs and different uh, services that are provided at each of the facilities. Uh, there was a question about opening the pool at Eagle Point. Uh, that is later than Bison Ridge due to the work that's uh, being done on the fire suppression system. Part of that is above the pool and, and therefore uh, we can't open that pool as soon as the one at Bison Ridge. Um, as I mentioned, the reopening is, is different for each facility, and uh, we've, we've got some good statistics to, or data to give you uh, later on in the meeting about that. Um, our emphasis has been on maintaining safety for the public and for city employees while maintaining services. And uh, part of what we're uh, also doing in, in, as the city is providing operating uh, grants for some of the businesses uh, that have been impacted by COVID-19. 
We're also providing an exemption for temporary signage for businesses until October 31 of this year so that they can advertise that they're open or that they have services available uh, in a certain way. Um, it was also noted in, in the uh, citizen comment period that extraction oil and gas has filed for bankruptcy protection. Uh, we're still reviewing the implications of that uh, given the existing ROA agreement. We don't know all the implications of that yet so far. So I'll turn it over to, um, I believe it's uh, Chief Nichols at this point, and uh, he will give his report. Roger, thank you. I apologize for that. I was having some technical difficulties. Uh, everything that I was going to cover in the update was uh, previously covered by you, so I don't have anything else to add. Uh, and then I will pass it on to DCM Smith. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we'll start with uh, community relations update. Uh, as Roger mentioned, as a result of the limited reopenings of all of our uh, facilities, it's been a very busy couple of weeks for our community relations folks who have designed and, and executed all of our public communications. Um, they've ordered and printed all the signage required to the public health orders and the social distancing guidelines that we have in place at all of those facilities. They've been working on the applications for the third, second round of nonprofit grants, um, which opened on Wednesday, June 3rd at 8 a.m. and closed on Monday, June 8th at 5 p.m. The city received 11 online applications and one paper application. Nonprofit grant funding was capped at $128,529 for nonprofits. Uh, city staff will be notifying those approved uh, those grants later this week. Uh, with respect to our communications with the public, uh, the most recent announcements of the recreation center reopening after being closed have seen a spike in website traffic for parks, recreation, and golf. A uh, combined total of 3,540 people visited those websites over the last two weeks. In terms of social media communications, the city's reopening announcement on Facebook was the most popular post from the last two weeks. That post reached 8,900 people. Two combined posts about business and nonprofit recovery grant programs garnered a combined reach of over 7,400 people on Nextdoor and 7,300 people on Facebook. The windstorm cleanup event with A1 Organics reached 5,529 people. And Takeout Tuesday's census promotion with local restaurants has reached 4,704 people. Public art wraps have been installed on the utility boxes at the RTD Commerce City N Line Station. RTD recently installed the art wraps on four utility boxes at that same location. Two of the four boxes feature hummingbird artwork from local artist, April Watson. To learn more about this new art installation and the city's public art program, please visit public art webpage at c3gov.com backslash explore backslash public art. Some economic development updates. The COVID-19 Business Relief and Recovery Grant, which council has authorized a total of $500,000 for in three rounds um, for businesses experiencing financial hardship due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Eligible businesses may receive a grant of up to $5,000. Round one was $200,000 with 55 applications and 44 awards. Round two, June 3rd through June 8th, total 57 applications and the applications are in the review process. Round three, which is $100,000, does not have dates set yet and a funding resolution has been presented in tonight's city council packet. This funding resolution adds home-based businesses and 
previous grantees are ineligible to apply for funding. Commerce City Small Business COVID Relief Fund established April 20th loans up to $25,000. This is a program partnership with Adams County and the Colorado Enterprise Fund. $200,000 was budgeted in 2020 and council authorized an additional $200,000 through the CARES Act funding. 17 Commerce City companies have applied so far. Three loans have been closed. 12 companies are in the application process and two companies have withdrawn their application. The Adams County COVID-19 Small Business Mini Grant Program, which is being run through the Commerce City Chamber of Commerce and supported by the city's economic development position, is using $2.78 million in CARES Act funding for small mini grants. $375,000 in total is aggregate, allocated rather towards Commerce City businesses. Round one will be June 8th through 19th, 2020. Uh, on the restaurant support front, council passed an open spaces ordinance, temporary authorizing restaurants to utilize outdoor spaces. Um, the permitting process began last Friday and as of 5 p.m. tonight, we have not received an official application, though we have consult telephone calls with a few businesses that are ongoing. Commerce City's Takeout Tuesday's promotion kicked off June 2nd and this Month-long program connects Commerce City residents with local restaurants while sharing information about the 2020 census process. There are six local restaurants participating. To find out more information, go to c3gov.com backslash takeout. Staff also created an online directory of restaurants offering takeout, curbside, or delivery services, which are available at redefiningcommerce.com backslash business COVID-19. Uh, the ED division also held restaurant roundtables, one on May 21st, which had 31 participants, and June 4th session had 18 participants. Moving on now to the finance department, the 2019 CAFR presentation is scheduled to go before City Council on July 13th. They are prepared to do this, our vendor is prepared to do the presentation virtually. Any changes to this date will be communicated with the council or the public. The next CARES Act report is due to Adams County on July 4th. As a result, finance will remit the report on July 2nd. In the tax division, we have 83 active audits in process, nine audit postponements due to COVID-19, and that's down nine since my last report to you. No audit payment plans have been missed. That's down three since our last report. In the city clerk's office, we've received 12 business license applications and 18 core requests since our last meeting. Moving on to human resources, we have 362 actual employees out of 401 budgeted FTE positions. We have 192 VHEs on staff and 57 VHEs remain furloughed. 39 vacant full-time positions across the organization. HR has been working to implement an electronic request for position process through the NeoGov system. And they began screening applications and scheduling interviews for positions that have been authorized by the city manager's office to fill vacant positions. One of those is an IT for service desk analysts, and there are additional positions needed in the Parks and Rec Department as a result of reopening our facilities. In our Information Technology Department, last two weeks, we had 93 service desk tickets opened. Year to date, those tickets number 1,300. IT did training with QList, the mobile queuing and scheduling technology we have purchased as a result of the need to schedule people to visit City Hall and our other facilities. That training occurred on June 5th and will occur and occurred on June 12th. With the clerk's office, the court clerk's office, the court, community development, and the police department. City staff are currently testing and learning the system in preparation for its go live to the public. 
The e-ticketing implementation project will kick off this week. We were able to move up on the vendor's schedule and begin installation of that product sooner than we anticipated. Hardware and software licensing is on order to support hybrid city council and public meetings in the future where people could attend both in person and others could attend virtually. City staff are pushing this project forward as quickly as possible. We intend to have an implemented solution by the end of July. That concludes my report for the uh, departments I'm responsible for reporting out for. Thank you very much. And unfortunately, I uh, skipped over City Attorney Sheasley. Uh, he should have gone after me. So uh, turn it over to him. Uh, thank you, Roger. Just briefly, good evening, Council. Uh, the city continues to be under the safer at home and in the vast great outdoors order um, that was implemented early in June. Um, last week, restaurants and, or in the last couple of weeks, restaurants were allowed to open along with recreation centers and gyms and outdoor playgrounds. Uh, we, we are seeing a, an expansion of um, the, the prior regime a little bit, um, leading towards what would be hopefully what is now gonna be called the protect our neighbors phase um, that I believe the governor this announced this afternoon, hope to be implemented later in June, uh, probably in July at some point. Uh, from the uh, executive order standard, the, the big one over the weekend and recently was to extend the limitations on evictions uh, for another 30 days. Um, that is the update regarding the state of legal affairs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, then reporting on the external facing departments, uh, the ones that are providing the services directly to the public. Uh, I'll start with community development first. Uh, they have uh, worked on the comprehensive plan update and uh, that is scheduled for city council approval this evening. Um, also in terms of development review, there's the legato uh, development uh, that is still continuing on and uh, we have no additional information uh, tonight for you. Buckley Crossing uh, that is uh, that would be uh, north of uh, 112th Avenue uh, out near Tower Road uh, that is proceeding in terms of a PUD amendment. Uh, we expect that to come in in, in the next few weeks. Uh, Mile High Greyhound site, the D2 plat terminology adjustment was submitted on June 1 and their PIA is under review. In terms of new projects, uh, there's several substantial projects. Uh, one is on the smaller side, uh, that's at Marty Farms. Uh, their remaining industrial uh, property sold and uh, what's being proposed there is a 50,000 square foot industrial development building. Uh, Murray Farms, uh, we have a prospective development team that uh, has started meeting with staff. And at 104th and Joliet, uh, we anticipate 1.2 million square feet of industrial development by the end of June. So uh, that one is a very large development. Uh, oil and gas, uh, there's a meeting coming up on the 22nd for uh, your discussion about the amendments to the LDC, the Land Development Code. And then uh, there's a special Planning Commission meeting coming up on June 23 for Stadium Auto Parts. In terms of uh, building inspections, uh, 1,292 building inspections were conducted so far in June and 160 permits uh, were submitted in the first one half of June compared to 302 in June of 2019. So again, um, 10 more than what we saw uh, same period in June last year. Other significant projects, uh, I think I reported on most of these prior to this, uh, 8251 Quintero, uh, 90,000 square feet of, of uh, tenant improvement uh, is near approval. And 10714 Havana Street, uh, small, uh, just under 10,000 square foot office shop is under review. 5450 Dahlia, 6,000 square foot addition uh, for repairs. 
18121 uh, 81st Street, uh, 10,000 square foot of covered parking and a fueling station. Uh, at 17776 East 84th Avenue, three core and shell buildings, uh, 564,000 square feet. That's under review, nearing approval. And then uh, Huntington Industrial on 108th Avenue, uh, also core and shell buildings that are under review. One is uh, 64,500, another one is 121,000 square feet, and the third one is 81,952. Uh, moving on to uh, CDBG, uh, there's uh, resolutions to amend the citizen participation plan and uh, plans to disperse the COVID-19 dollars to MAKER. Uh, moving on to Parks and Recreation Golf, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they opened both recreation centers. Uh, there are capacity uh, for people to sign up for the cardio wait time blocks. Um, there's also some capacity on pool times. Uh, it's limited to eight people. Uh, also, when the two recreation centers opened this morning, uh, it was successful. Patrons were waiting in their cars at 7 a.m. and they uh, filtered into the centers using social distancing and uh, we're lined up outside on our uh, social distancing markers. So people have been uh, polite and, and uh, respectful of each other's uh, uh, concerns. And uh, guests uh, had reported that they're excited to be back in the recreation centers and they followed all the guidelines that were set out. Uh, there are prime, some t prime time blocks that are still available at Bison Ridge. Um, the prime times are mostly at capacity. Uh, however, there are little wait lists and, and uh, there are some, some uh, various times that are available. So people are encouraged to, to inquire if, if they're interested. Uh, time blocks are open a week in advance. And so uh, reservations for June 22 open today and uh, people can, again, like I said, apply for those the uh, pool at Bison Ridge is at capacity at the high demand blocks, such as uh, 5 to 6.30 p.m. However, there are other time blocks that are available throughout the week. And then uh, Eagle Point, uh, again, cardio and those type of uh, services are available. The pool is not opened, as I mentioned at the beginning. The uh, Youth camp is going well at Eagle Point. That started on June 1 with 30 weekly participants that registered already back in February. Uh, Buffalo Run Golf Course. Uh, we've seen 7,700 rounds of golf played through uh, yesterday. And uh, the revenues are steadily increasing. Uh, the first week it was $2,000. Uh, by the end of May, it was 6,400. And uh, the week of uh, June 1 to June 7 jumped to 12,000 and uh, June 8 to 14 was 18,000. So uh, again, nice increases in the revenues uh, for food and beverage sales. Um, the junior golf uh, first tee uh, that started on June 1 as well. Uh, there's eight kids in the class with uh, four classes per day on Mondays. So again, uh, full capacity and, and uh, being well received. Public works projects, um, 72nd in Colorado, that work uh, is uh, basically complete except for paperwork with CDOT. Uh, 88th Avenue, uh, pro projected uh, completion for the environmental assessment and the preliminary design is the fourth quarter of this year. Um, staff just submitted a build grant on uh, May 18 for that project for some additional funding for uh, actual construction. Uh, Vasquez, uh, the executive director, uh, was going to make a presentation to city council on June 22. That has been moved back, and so we're waiting to get that uh, firmed up before we know exactly when that will occur. 
and that's uh, again to uh, be held prior to going out to public outreach on that project. 104th Avenue signals, uh, Revere, Florence, and Joliet are complete and operational. Uh, they're waiting on the uh, LED streets, street uh, si uh, signs. Uh, meanwhile, we put up temporary street signs so that people know what intersection they're at. Um, pavement management and flat work. Flat work started with the uh, Northern Range and it's moving to the historic city about July 1. And uh, paving starts the week of July 6. And estimated completion of that will be the, at the end of November. Uh, bid, bridge replacement on 112th Avenue, we're at 30% design and uh, they're holding a meeting on that tomorrow and estimated completion for design is uh, August 15. Bridge replacement for Potomac and Peoria, uh, that was awarded to Benish, and so that work on the design will be starting shortly. Brighton Road, uh, 104th to uh, 112th, uh, Council approved selection of Hewitt Zollers, and so uh, they're at the 30% design as of tomorrow as well. And then uh, looking at some of the development projects, uh, 112th Avenue, Chambers to Parkside, uh, they plan to start paving that this week. And meanwhile, the uh, uh, trucking that's hauling dirt uh, has been detoured onto a different uh, road to again, deal with the, the dust issues that were there. Um, I think that pretty well wraps up external department reports. And uh, again, Staff is available for any questions that uh, you you may have, and uh, happy to to answer those. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for staff? Looks like Councilmember Smith. Um, DCM Tinkleberg, thank you for the presentation. I just have a quick question about um, the construction that was done on Colorado. Um, so the bike lane on the side, it just kind of looks like a shoulder. Is there a way to get more signage for that? Or like maybe a green stripe? Because it just, that is very, like dri it's driven on a lot. So just to get some more signage on that so people don't think it's a shoulder and take out a biker because that would not be fun. Yeah, okay, thank you. We will uh, pass that on to Public Works and have them uh, review that and get the appropriate signage and marking on the pavement. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Noble. Thank you very much for your uh, everyone's comprehensive report on what's been going on. Appreciate it. We got uh, a question, and I have seen it across social media as well, regarding King Supers. And I wondered how we receive uh, outbreak information from the county and from CDPHE, and if there's anything that we need to be doing proactively if it is an outbreak at a public, um, you know, some, someplace that everyone goes to, for example, as opposed to one of the nursing homes in Commerce City where they're on lockdown anyway, but maybe we should all have some idea. I'm not sure what the rules are about it, but there was a question. And since we don't receive that information, I wondered if you uh, could let us know how that process works, please. I would have to defer to the chief. Uh, I, I believe we do not, we no longer get information by address, but I would defer to chief if you can answer that question. I sure can, Roger. We do receive some information. It comes through the state courtesy of um, Adams County. Uh, the only information we receive are for residents that actually reside in Commerce City. So if they are employees, so it would only be residents information. So generating information as to where they all collectively work would be almost impossible to do. So if the employee doesn't live in Commerce City, we would not get that information anyway the city that they lived in would get their um, their positive information. So we don't get it as it relates to outbreaks in businesses or related to some other event. We just get an individual got tested. They came up positive. We get a flag on the address. Does that answer your question, ma'am? 
Uh, it does in a way. I know that Westward Magazine did an article on it and they check in with CDPHE uh, every few issues or they must have some sort of schedule that they operate on. So they, this information was included in an article that they received the information from CDPHE. So yeah, I'm just making note of it because until this is under control, we may need to know where these things are occurring and maybe we need to do something proactively in order to have that information and uh, be able to inform our residents when it's important. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for staff regarding the city's response to COVID-19? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next portion of the agenda. We'd like to thank everybody for your report and the comprehensive information provided to us this evening. Next on the agenda is a presentation on the request to extend the reunion sales and use tax reimbursement agreement. Will Deputy City Manager Tinkleberg please provide the rest presentation? Dylan, if you could share the presentations on the screen. Yes, sir. Let me know when you're ready to go to the next slide, Mr. Pinkenberg. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll quickly review uh, what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, one is the purpose and background, and then uh, the overall agreement goals, and uh, review the projects to be funded, and uh, give you our recommendations and talk about the next steps. Uh, the purpose of the executive session this evening is to instruct negotiators uh, regarding some of these points, and, and so I'll try to highlight some of that. Go ahead. Oakwood Homes representatives uh, have requested that the city extend the existing agreement. Um, this agreement uh, currently is for 33% of 3% sales and use tax. And uh, as mentioned earlier, it is for a 20 year period. Uh, the public improvements that are built uh, using this funding are normal city responsibilities. Uh, for an example, the first uh, segment of widening 104th Avenue was done by the Reunion Metro District. And uh, that normally would have been a city responsibility. And so uh, the request to extend is, is the reason for us asking for council direction regarding that request, uh, whether we should consider it or not, and uh, continue negotiations. Next slide. So this uh, agreement, as mentioned, uh, was entered into in 2001, and uh, that consolidated eight previous agreements and uh, basically covered a whole wide range of topics. And then there was a subsequent agreement that was entered into in 2003 that supplemented the above consolidated agreement and uh, basically focused in on the sales and use tax and building permit revenue sharing. And uh, that's the subject of the request is to uh, basically extend that agreement for some uh, targeted projects. Next slide. Um, so again, that agreement set the revenue share at 33% of 3%. So one of the questions uh, for tonight, uh, as you instruct us as negotiators, uh, are you content with that 33% of 3% or should that change in some way? And uh, we'll review the, the uh, list of projects later and you'll see that's an extensive list. Um, in that agreement also, road impact fees were to be credited to reunion rather than to the landowners. Next slide. We've covered most of this. Uh, so the existing agreement expires January 1 of 2022. Uh, and the agreement, uh, as I mentioned, enabled reunion to proceed with 104th Avenue improvements. Uh, I have included uh, in the council packet a copy of the original 2001 agreement and the 2003 agreement for your information. Next slide. 
So the goals of this uh, agreement are to provide a funding mechanism for reunion to build public improvements that are city responsibility. And it allows reunion to build those public improvements on a schedule that is compatible with reunion's development. Uh, in other words, projects can be built when, when they need them built. And uh, those projects don't have to wait on the city's project schedule and our staff workload. It also uh, basically provides for those public improvements without the city needing to directly fund them or manage the projects. Again, that uh, saves on city staff time because we do have plenty of other projects. Next slide. So this is a, a map that shows the proposed uh, road improvements. Uh, so you can see 112th Avenue is on there, <clears throat> two different segments. Uh, the segment in the middle there between Chambers and uh, Parkside are, is uh, being worked on right now. Um, there would also be Chambers Road, High Plains Parkway, which is uh, intended to ultimately connect from the existing tower road alignment to uh, the Buckley Road alignment uh, on the north side at 120th. Uh, this would also improve uh, Potomac south of 104th and uh, improve a portion of 96th Avenue as well as the uh, south end of Chambers Road and then uh, land, uh, portion of Landmark. Uh, there are also drainage projects. I did not include the map that shows all of those. Uh, we're still talking about uh, the various projects. Um, I do have a list of the projects uh, that are being discussed besides these road projects uh, and those involved Second Creek uh, outfall, uh, O'Brien Canal relocation, uh, the Second Creek Regional Detention Pond, Ragweed Draw, uh, Third Creek Drainage Outfalls, that type of thing. So uh, a number of improvements and, and we can discuss that later in terms of what projects to include. Next slide. Here are the uh, estimated costs for those various projects. Uh, you can see that the subtotal for transportation projects is 103, almost $104 million. Uh, potential drainage subtotal is uh, in the neighborhood of uh, $48 million for a potential total of $151,400. Uh, in terms of all of those potential projects. And so one of the items for, you know, a question for city council later is, uh, are you uh, okay with this list or do you want us to do further research and uh, provide direction? Um, next slide, please. An extension of the uh, sales and use tax agreement is recommended. Uh, it has worked successfully so far. Uh, the benefit of the extension is that it focuses in on specific projects. And so we will be working to scope out those projects. And as I mentioned, uh, it provides a funding mechanism for a reunion to build the public improvements that are the city's responsibility. And it allows them to build those improvements on a schedule that's compatible with their development. Um, so they can build them when they need them and uh, they don't have to wait on the city's project schedule and workload. It also uh, provides the needed public improvements without the city needing to directly fund or manage the projects. And uh, managing the projects is a substan substantial task. And so uh, the, this is of a benefit to the city. Therefore, we do recommend approval to move forward conditionally. And uh, again, look for your direction in the executive session. Are there any questions? You can go to the next slide. Uh, these are the next steps. Uh, we would negotiate the extension uh, the remainder of this year and present a proposed agreement to you in the coming year. And then the new IGA would, would uh, take effect on January of 2022. Are there any questions for me or, or any of the other staff? Councilwoman Noble. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think a lot of people aren't aware that uh, 
while reunion builds out the roads that the city maintains all roads after that point. So we want to make that clear that once the road is built, that becomes the city's responsibility after that. I read, was reading the IGA from uh, 20 years ago or 20, 2003. And on page five, it talks about uh, whenever one of these projects is finished that the district shall submit to the city a statement of actual costs incurred or suffered by the district. And uh, I wondered if we have been uh, receiving those documents, if we have been reviewing them, there is a 30 day deadline for the city to respond on each of them, a 30 day review period. And if so, um, what information can we glean from that regarding actual costs incurred or suffered was and what happens to the extra money if there's ever any extra money or if we noticed any anomalies in the costs so two two items. Uh, you are correct about the city maintaining those uh, streets once they're completed. That's assuming uh, again. It, I, I have to be careful about a general statement because occasionally a developer will have uh, private streets, and those remain the responsibility of a metro district, for example, to maintain those. Uh, in these in this case, though, we're talking about public streets, and you are correct. The city. Uh, once they're dedicated to the city, the city uh, has the responsibility to maintain and clean and that type of thing from there on. In terms of your question regarding the intergovernmental agreement, um, I have asked staff to, uh, in finance to give us an update. However, they just completed the uh, annual audit and they're working on, on the budget at this point. So they've been swamped and therefore uh, you know, it'll, it'll be some time before we receive an update in terms of what the existing status is uh, on the existing agreement. Um, the other thing, bear in mind, the original agreement was with Shea Homes and uh, Oakwood take, took over the, the master developer role from Shea Homes. And uh, so they've, they've been uh, basically working under this agreement since 2000, uh, 2017, 2017. So, uh, again, this is relatively new to them as well. So, but we'll, we'll be able to give a report. It's just, it's going to have to wait a little bit, unfortunately. It would seem that the best way to do it is to have them simultaneously then if we're being asked to make a decision, that we have the report and we make a decision. Yeah, that's As opposed to making a decision and then waiting for the report. Yeah, that makes sense uh, because it's going to be some time before we are able to bring a document back to you for your approval at, at any rate in also. So. Thank you very much. Sure. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, yeah, I was just curious, like how long are they, are you wanting to extend this out? And is it another 20 years they're wanting to do this or how long are they? That is going to depend, I, I would say, on the amount of uh, projects that we agree to cover, because you know it's a function of of uh, total cost of those projects, and related to that, uh, you know, what's the expected revenue that would be shared over that time? You know, if we focus only on transportation projects, for for an example, you know, you're talking a little under 104 million. If we include drainage projects, then then we're over 151 million. So again, it's a function of revenue, time, uh, and number of projects, basically, to to get that to to match out. Okay, and it's the developer that's that's paying for this, or who? I, how are they getting the money, the revenue and sales tax and all that? Where's that coming from? Oops, sorry. The initial uh, money would be fronted, as I understand that I haven't gone, gotten into those details uh, with the representatives from, from the district, but uh, what has happened in the past is the Metro District fronted the money and uh, the city reimbursed uh, over time as revenue came in. So in that sense, uh, they were at risk 
that there would be enough development to generate sales and use tax to reimburse them. Okay, thank you. Councilwoman Alan Thomas. Yes, thank you for your presentation, Roger. Um, I have a few questions, but the first one I'm looking at my notes as well. Um, how much money has Reunion Metropolitan um, districts received um, like from January 1st to current? That, that would be part of the report that I mentioned to Councilwoman Noble that uh, you know finance will need to pull the, those numbers together to give us an update. Okay, thank you. And then um, other question, did the city receive um, any road impact fee for the development of 96th from Reunion? We take in road impact fee as building permits are pulled. And so uh, as each permit is issued, they pay all of the uh, uh, building permit fees as well as the impact fees. So as each house is uh, permitted, then there's a uh, amount of money that's collected for each home. And uh, so that, that again is part of that report that we'll have to uh, uh, have finance complete later on. Okay, thank you. Sure. Councilwoman Noble. The um, agreement also mentions that said revenues can be used for payment of bonded indebtedness as well as construction or acquisition costs. So um, not only am I the Ward 4 representative, I happen to live in Reunion also. So the question is, um, at what point have they used any of these funds to reduce the bonded indebtedness for the Metro District? Or are they um, doing projects that instead um, enhance new development so that the district continues to be, the residents continue to be encumbered as the developers continue to build new homes? And, and the residents are not seeing the benefit of this agreement because it is not, none of the funds are being used um, for bonded indebtedness. I do not have that information for you at this time. I, I don't know, you know what reunion can share with us. We certainly can ask that. Well, it's in the, the IGA. Okay, then we will ask for it. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions for staff? So looking at this on the surface, I find this one to be a little bit hard to swallow. Um, the 112th Avenue project between Chambers and Parkside, we're kicking in about half the money and the other money, half the money was supposed to be kicked in by Oakwood in order to do that project and then you find out down the road that the money they're kicking in was actually money that we rebated back to them to begin with. And so I'm curious, I mean, how much money do we need to continue? Is this truly a equitable situation where we are getting the best return out of our money by giving them money and then having to turn around and put twice as much money on top of it again? But we can have that discussion later in an executive session should council choose to go to that. Um, I think it's a little bit premature to go in there without seeing all the dollar figures and trying to really understand what's going on uh, to go in there and talk about how do we even instruct negotiators to uh, go back to the table when we don't even know how much money is being generated, where the money is being spent or what's being done on that. But again, that'll be a conversation for later in the evening when we get to that agenda item. Uh, one last time, are there any other questions for uh, staff concerning this uh, agreement? Seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes items that are routine, procedural, informational, self-explanatory, and non-controversial. They are presented to council for a single motion and vote. Any member of the council may ask to remove a specific item for further discussion and a separate vote. Tonight, there are five items listed under the consent agenda. This includes resolution 2020-41, which was added to the agenda today. Does anyone on council wish to remove an item off the consent agenda for further discussion? Councilwoman Noble. 
Yes, I'd like to remove resolution 2020-34. Very good, we'll remove 2020-34. Are there any other uh, requests to remove items off of the consent agenda? All right, I'm looking for a motion in a second to approve the consent agenda as amended. Mayor Pro Tem. A motion to approve the consent agenda as, agen as amended. Councilwoman Noble. I'll second that. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as amended, which means pulling resolution 2020-34 from the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing no request for discussion, will the city clerk please read the titles? Ordinance 2277, an ordinance amending the 2020 budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, by the recognition of the National League of Cities Census Rapid Response Grant Program in the amount of $9,400 and the authorization of the expenditure thereof. Ordinance 2278, an ordinance amending the 2020 budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, by the recognition of the Colorado Auto Theft Prevention Authority Grant Program in the amount of $200,000 and authorization of the expenditure thereof. Ordinance 2280, an ordinance amending the 2020 budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, by the recognition of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Community Development Block Grant funds through the CARES Act in the amount of $246,587 and the authorization of the expenditure thereof. Resolution 2020-35, resolution amending the directory uh, of city fees and charges. Resolution 2020-41, resolution authorizing a supplement and so Commerce City Small Business Support Slash Recovery Grant Program. Thanks, sir. The titles have been read. We'll take a roll call vote. Council Member Madera? Yes. Council Member Alan Thomas? Yes. Council Member Noble? Yes. Councilmember Wardiola. Yes. Councilmember Hurd. Yes. Councilmember Grimes. Yes. Councilmember Smith. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank. Yes. Mayor Huseman. Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Noble, you requested to pull resolution 2020-34. Please explain why. Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, pull the resolution regarding the comprehensive plan and the $717,000 uh, contract with the planning company. For this reason in particular, is that we could, or two reasons, that we have a presentation on the comprehensive plan and what's going to be included in it. And secondly, as part of that presentation, that we have a review of the 2020 plan and what was attained and what wasn't attained in the last decade before we move on to the new uh, comprehensive plan. This is a considerable amount of money. We have been, um, we're going to be potentially expending more money this evening and we turned down um, the Honan building a couple of weeks ago. So I think anything that we go into, we need to go into it very clearly. So I'm asking if we could postpone this until we have a presentation from staff about the comprehensive plan and uh, the elements and the 2020 comprehensive plan. Thank you. Would staff like to uh, respond to that? Thank you, Mayor. Jason Rogers, uh, Community Development Director. Uh, I would like to note, uh, thank you, uh, Councilmember Noble, for your comments. One, today we actually do have a, a PowerPoint presentation outlining uh, the purpose of the comp plan, but ultimately also uh, the purpose for selecting House of Levine um, and the components that will be incorporated as part of the 2020 uh, comp plan project before you today. If you would like to have that presentation um, and also just kind of share for additional consideration as it relates to your request about what we've been able to achieve, what we have not been able to achieve. It is typical as part of any comp plan update process that we undertake what is a diagnostic report 
it is a strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis of the various components, policies, uh, long-term vision that we had enacted back in 2010, to determine what we were able to succeed, where there was there's area and opportunity for improvement. Um, once again, the amount of staffing resources and capabilities, we do not have that internally to be able to perform at a level and at a high level and at a quality that would be able to help define for our residents um, certain things that they would like for us to accomplish or to see, but ultimately also for mayor and city council in being able to make certain decisions about the long-term future. Uh, consultants bring in certain resources and certain technological, um, I will say, capabilities that we do not have that we rely with this diagnostic report that would come with this comp plan update. So just as a, a, a matter of practice with what we've seen and how things have conducted in the past uh, with this type of work. Alderman Noble. Uh, I have looked at the slide presentation and it didn't address some of those questions. There was a considerable amount of money that was going to transportation, for example. And I think it just warrants more discussion by the council regarding the categories of the comprehensive plan vis-a-vis -vis the past 10 years. I happened to have read the comprehensive plan when I was running for city council because it seemed like an important thing to look at for sure, to know what it was that the residents of Commerce City wanted to see for their futures. What have we been able to accomplish and what haven't we been able to accomplish before we create a new document that gives us a whole new set that we may not accomplish. I see these wind up in, um, the files frequently. And I just uh, would like us to be more deliberate about uh, how we're approaching the comprehensive plan instead of just approving the money and sending the consultants off on their merry way. Councilman Wariola. Yeah, um, my question is, are we on a timeline to make that decision or could we do a study session um, and um, get more information? I know there's new council members that we've, we've seen this, um, but with the times of the budget, 700,000, uh, what's the timeline, Mr. Rogers? Uh, so the overall timeline from uh, Super Nuts for uh, the comp plan is approximately 18 to 21 months uh, for us to be able to go through a very engaged, uh, robust, um, and connected process with um, our, our, our community, uh, a number of different stakeholder groups, both from a technical, but also from those that we partner with, uh, with, resp with respect to other, uh, other agencies, and then obviously um, a, a level of engagement with a citizens advisory committee throughout that process. Um, kind of looking at and breaking out the various components. Uh, the comp plan itself is slated, obviously, uh, if all things were to move forward uh, with a uh, support of the contract today, uh, kickoff in August with the completion of October, 2021 um, for adoption of the new comp plan and then sequentially staggered a, a, a kickoff of the transportation plan through June, 21, uh, June 2021, uh, with the completion of August 2022, uh, the economic development strategy looking at 2021 through May 2022, and ultimately the Parks and Recreation Golf Master Plan, uh, starting at the same overlapping time frame of June 2021 to January 2022. So a staggering effect across all supportive documents in, in, a, in a very high level of engagement and diagnostic review of various technical details and obviously policy details and recommendations and, and driving factors into uh, what we currently have in place to inform us as we go forward. Thank, thank you. Councilman Madera. Uh, can you just speak a little to um, how the comprehensive plan is used going forward? Yeah, um, I'd like to think of the comprehensive plan truly as the, the backbone spine infrastructure for how certain policy decisions on growth and development, um, certain public infrastructure and, and supportive amenities 
as we think about with Parks and Recreation Golf Plan, how we look at identification of public parks, how we create policy of looking at uh, private parks that come uh, within new uh, residential development, how we look at the clustering of a variety of land uses that are compatible from a, I'll say, a contextual sensitivity from impacts as it relates to nuisances with noise, air, um, and other uh, and other impacts, um, but also looking at how you then start to look through the urban design uh, framework of how you stitch new communities in with existing communities, how you look at the revitalization, um, the repurposing, and then obviously looking at how uh, other certain policies of sustainability, resiliency, environmental quality start to stitch into itself so that you have a very comprehensive development or, or growth of a community um, that is playing its part into the larger region. <laughs> so a comprehensive plan is, is very much a, a starting point in how a lot of conversations about how the city uh, ultimately grows and is sustainable um, with its growth and development um, for, as you, as you will see, as we identify for at, at, at most 40 to 45 years out. And can you speak a little bit of, um, you know, why these plans are updated every 10 years and, you know, what, what the purpose behind that is? Very good question. Um, as we've already started to see with the changing dynamic in the market, and what I mean by the market, what we've understood as various development trends, both traditional and new dynamic trends with uh, horizontal and vertical mixed use, and or just the subsidence, uh, the the, the contraction of the retail market, it allows for us to, once again, stay ahead of the curve and, and stay in front of developing trends so that we know how to address, we know from a policy perspective that then ultimately will filter down into our land development code about how we take policy, turn into regulation and standards. So being able to update these on a regular time frame allows for us to be able to modulate and to be able to meet the needs of our community and what we're understanding, what can be delivered into the community based on obviously emerging market trends. Thank you. That's more normal. In looking at the 2020 comprehensive plan, there is an entire section um, from the community that was very innovative and was looking ahead on greenhouse gases. I can't see necessarily what, if anything, was accomplished in the past 10 years regarding greenhouse gases in Commerce City, but there it is in the 2010 general plan. So if it is the backbone, if it is the spine, then what is it that we accomplish with it? If we use it to determine development, why are there so many areas of Commerce City that are zoned PUD, which for a while I actually thought meant planned, planned unit, unit development would mean it was planned, but in fact, it's kind of a big bucket for all kinds of zoning without a whole lot of, of planning going into it. I think because there are four of us at a minimum who are new, let alone everybody else hasn't been on the um, city council for more than two years, that uh, taking another month or two will not affect the timeline that much in order for us to have a clear understanding of where we're headed and how we want it to integrate with the past and with the future as well. I have one question I'd like to get in. Looking at the legislative text, it doesn't show any of the other bidders or the values of their bids for their uh, proposal uh, in response to the RFP. Can you speak to that of how many other bidders? I notice this company has offices in Illinois and other locations and no offices in Colorado. So my question is, were there any local candidates that uh, applied or submitted a proposal? Uh, yes, sir. There were, there were other local candidates that did um, provide or did submit um, for the comp plan. Uh, we had one um, that had submitted for the comp plan. Actually, excuse me, we had five proposals that were submitted for the comp plan. Um, some of those costs um, associated with those five proposals, um, one local um, at the same time, 
Uh, we had some that were also out of state. I would say that the, the majority of what we found as the next closest um, bid proposal was 170,000 higher than uh, Hallowed Levine to perform uh, all of the requested work uh, that we bring forward to you today. And just to clarify, Clarion is a local uh, consultant based out of Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Hurst. I wanted to ask if we could take this discussion to after the presentation because um, I think these are really good questions. I just think some of it might be addressed in the presentation where we can then kind of ask these follow-up questions on anything we feel was missed. Uh, because I, I agree, this is a, a, the next 10 years is big for our community, for our city. Um, and so understanding the direction and kind of giving direction to a consultant uh, is important. But I also want to understand that there's a process that takes place on why we're spending that much money on this plan. It's because of the input that we'll have to go into developing this plan. And so I want to hear more about that because, you know, we could be having a long discussion about, you know, what's what direction we're sending the vendor on, but that direction may not be decided until after we actually issue the contract. And then we all sit, to get, sit down as stakeholders with the community and decide that direction. So uh, I think it's a great discussion. I just would love to hear the presentation before we can um, kind of dig into it, if you will. Councilwoman Alan Thomas. Um, yes, I am. Um... Just was curious also, um, you know, as a new councilwoman, I agree with Councilwoman Noble that I would like, you know, more information and I did review the presentation, but we have to keep in mind as well um, that we are in a, pa a pandemic now and it may take us years to recover. So all of this needs to be incorporated in that as well. So I just wanted to express that. Councilwoman Noble. I did, um, Council Member Hurst, I appreciate your comment. Keep in mind, I took this off the consent agenda, so the presentation what wouldn't have been made, it would have just been approved. I would like to make a motion for a study session on this and uh, for at least a portion of a study session so that we can discuss it there and uh, not just look at the presentation that some people may not have necessarily seen and also uh, take into account everything that's happened in 2020 uh, since 2010 with the comprehensive plan that I'm not sure yeah. staff is prepared to address tonight. So um, again, I would like to make a motion for a study session on uh, the comprehensive plan um, past and future. Would you like to amend that to continue this item until after a study session is given to the council? Any presentation on this? Could you say that again, Mayor? Would you like to amend your motion to continue this item until after a study session where a presentation can be given on this subject? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I like your amendment. Thank you. Yeah. Are you seconding it? <laughs> no, I'm not, but I needed to clarify that because this was an item of discussion that needed to be voted on. So I wanted to clarify that you wanted to continue this until after we have a study session. So I have a motion on the table to continue resolution 2020-34 until after staff can prepare a presentation. Prior to looking for a second, I'll give an opportunity for Mr. Tinklenberg to speak. I was just going to uh, offer August uh, 10 as a possible study session, but it's sort of irrelevant to the motion, so. Thank you. And Councilwoman Alan Thomas. I'd like to second the motion. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second to continue resolution 2020-34 until after a study session can be held in order for council to receive a presentation on all aspects of the comprehensive plan. Is there any discussion? Seeing no request for discussion, we'll take a roll call vote. Council member Madera. Yes. 
Council Member Alan Thomas? Yes. Council Member Noble? Yes. Council Member Wardiola? Yes. Council Member Hurst? Yes. Council Member Grimes? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank? Yes. Mayor Huseman? Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you. All right, that concludes our discussion over the consent agenda. Next on the agenda, we have resolutions. The next two items related to the city CDBG program and we'll have a consolidated public hearing. This time I will open the public hearing. Would anybody on council like staff to give the presentations that were included in the packet? Being no request for the presentation, does anyone on council have any questions for the staff regarding these two resolutions? Seeing no questions for staff, Mr. Clerk, was there anybody registered to speak on this matter? Mayor Huseman, no members of the public registered to speak and no written comments were received by the deadline. Thank you very much. One last time, does anyone on council have any further questions? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. First up is resolution 2020-36, approving substantial amendment to the 2016-2020 citizen participation plan. I'm looking for a motion in a second to adopt resolution 2020-36. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, motion to adopt resolution 2020-36. Thank you, Councilwoman Alan Thomas. I'll second the motion. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2020-36. Is there any discussion? Seeing no requests for discussion, will the city clerk please read the title, then take a roll call vote. Resolution 2020-36, resolution approving a substantial amendment to the 2016 to 2020 consolidated plan citizen participation plan. And then I'll go ahead and proceed with the vote. Uh, Council Member Madera? Yes. Council Member Alan Thomas? Yes. Council Member Noble? Oh, yes. Council Member Wardiola? Yes. Council Member Hurst? Yes. Council Member Grimes? Yes. Council Member Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank? Yes. Mayor Huseman? Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you. Next on the list is resolution 2020-37, approving first substantial amended 2019 action plan. Looking for a motion and a second to adopt a resolution 2020-37. Mayor Pro Tem? A motion to adopt resolution 2020-37. Councilwoman Alan Thomas. I'd second the motion. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2020-37. Is there any discussion? I would ask the city clerk to read the title and then take a roll call vote. Resolution 2020-37, resolution approving the first substantial amended 2019 annual action plan. Council member Madera? Yes. Council member Alan Thomas? Yes. Council member Noble? Yes. Council member Wardiola? Yes. Council member Hurst? Yes. Council member Grimes? Yes. Council member Smith? Yes. Councilman Frank? Yes. Mayor Huseman? Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you. Next on the agenda is resolution 2020-39, an authorization for expenditure of CARES Act funding to provide mortgage and rent relief to Commerce City households. Does anybody on council wish to have uh, the presentation given to us? 
Seeing no request for presentation. Does anyone on council have questions for staff? No questions for staff. I'm looking for a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2020-39 and ask if there is any discussion. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, motion to adopt resolution 2020-39. Thank you. Councilwoman Ellen Thomas. I'll second the motion. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2020-39. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Noble. Yes, my apologies. I um, Would it be useful though for the community to know what's going to be in this, in this package uh, before we vote on it? I think it would. It's an important step and it would be worthwhile to uh, share the information with the community who might be listening in and avail themselves of this relief. Mr. Gibson, would you please pull the presentation up and whoever staff member is gonna present that, please do so. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. <clears throat> uh, so just kind of recap, the city previously accepted and appropriate funding for uh, funding of the general fund for general fund purposes authorized by the CARES Act. Um, this had it equated to about 4.6 and some odd million dollars on May 28th, 2020 and further support June 2020, June 1st, 2020, uh, council gave direction to staff to establish a mortgage and relief program using a portion of the CARES Act funds. Um, the purpose of this program is to provide commerce city residents in need with an additional emergency resource to prevent eviction and or foreclosure uh, because of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, this item tonight uh, is authorizing the expenditure of $500,000 of CARES Act funding uh, and allows staff to identify a partner to administer these, these funds on behalf of the city. Uh, staff is currently negotiating eligibility parameters and award criteria with partners, but the broad distribution of these funds is targeting those at or below 80% of the area median income. In discussing with our partners, um, no finite numbers, but what has been shared is that this will be able to have a significant uh, impact on a number of families and or residents uh, within uh, the boundaries of Commerce City. And with that, if there's any questions, thank you. Councilwoman Noble. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Rogers. And I appreciate that Mayor Huseman had uh, brought this to our attention and I thank him for that. What's the timeline on this? I don't think we gave you one and uh, I wonder what you're looking at as the timeline so that residents can anticipate when they can apply for this. Uh, the, it has always been the intent of staff on what we heard the goal by by mayor and city council was to have the program stood up by the end of the month. So that is what we are shooting towards, uh, working with our partners in being able to get the program program stood up. Thank you. Mr. Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Just to supplement uh, what Mr. Rogers said, the, um, excuse me, the standard, uh, I think I owe $5 council now because my phone just went off um it's nice to see you all smile uh the uh the ami measurement uh borrowing from the county's program measured the annual uh, the median income as of march 11th of this year uh mr rogers i don't know if that had significant impact i can believe it coincides with the beginning of the public announcements on the, the closures on the pandemic um, if that was a concern for council, I just wanted to highlight that because that's in the resolution. Um, if council wanted to strike that and just leave it blank, you could do that in passing it. I don't know how the uh, partner that is chosen would ultimately measure that. Um, clearly, there has to be a, a, an antecedent date, but I just wanted to highlight that so everybody's aware. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion on this item? All right, I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2020-39. Will the city clerk please read the title and take a roll call vote? 
Resolution 2020-39, resolution authorizing the expenditure of CARES Act funding to provide mortgage and rent relief to Commerce City households. Council Member Madera. Yes. Council Member Alan Thomas. Yes. Council Member Noble. Yes. Council Member Wardiola. Yes. Council Member Hurst. Yes. Council Member Grimes. Yes. Council Member Smith. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank. Yes. Mayor Huseman. Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you. That concludes all of our resolutions for the evening. Next on the agenda is administrative council business. Are there any council members that have administrative council business they wish to discuss? Councilman yeah. Alan Thomas. Yes, thank you. I would just like um, city council and the mayor to know um, we did on last Thursday, the senior commission had a meeting, um, a virtual meeting and it went really well. And um, just wanted to say, you know, the residents were really happy with um, how Commerce City um, is overall want to, they wanted me to thank them. And I want to thank um, all the city staff for how they're improving things in Commerce City and all their hard work. Um, and just happy that we were able to have a virtual meeting. So just wanted to mainly say thank you, to, you know, for the city staff and all their hard work. And, you know, we, we're noticing a lot of changes, especially in our area. So thank you or in my ward, I should say. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Councilwoman Noble. Yes, thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to thank staff for uh, grooming the park at uh, Chambers and 117th. I do hope that more will come because uh, it could use a little bit more upkeep and landscaping. So it's a very visible park, of course. And I also appreciate the efforts regarding the dust on 112th between Parkland and Tower. Uh, we still haven't had oil laid there yet, and that was promised. I know it's been quite windy, so maybe they haven't been able to get to it, but that hasn't been accomplished. And there hasn't been a whole lot of water that's gone down for the same reason, I suppose, because of the wind, but nevertheless, it continues to be dusty. Um, speaking of dust, on Saturday, we were driving down 104th, when we pass by Oakwood Homes Reunion Ridge. And uh, if I could show everyone the picture, you would be stunned at the dust that was coming off of that property, uh, crossing 104th and going into the homes at uh, Potomac Farms. There was some uh, young man who was actually trying to walk along the sidewalk to get through there, but it was a considerable mess. And I, it, Given the fact that they have graded every single inch of that property, um, I'd like to learn from staff uh, what they could possibly do in order to tamp down uh, that dust. I think that'll be quite difficult. Um, I also uh, want to put in another plug for addressing speeding on 119th and on Laredo. There are a lot of new homes, including small homes and um, I went out there myself and hung out on a corner to watch the traffic and uh, there is a lot of speed. You know, the city has tried uh, different things in the past and the residents are asking about speed bumps. So I am curious um, about that. And um, I have one other item, but I might just leave those that way for a minute in case uh, Mr. Tinklenberg has some answers to those, but I do have one more item that I want to bring up uh, before I finish my administrative business. Since those are all kind of public worksy. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on the dust issue, uh, Public Works has engaged with uh, Oakwood Homes uh, contractor regarding the dust, uh, particularly on, on uh, Ridgeview, Reunion Ridge, I'm sorry, uh, redevelopment there. And uh, 
the agreement was that uh, they're also to provide uh, dust mitigation there. On 112th, they had a glitch with their con uh, subcontractor, I should call it, for putting down the, the magnesium chloride. And mm -hmm. uh, that is now scheduled, uh, I believe, I'll defer to Joe, but as I recall, it's scheduled for the 17th, so this Wednesday. Great. Regarding the speeding, we'll we'll pass that on to police department. Okay, thank you very much. If we can't get some sort of um, uh, if if speed bumps aren't a consideration, is that what you're suggesting? Um, we'll have to see if there's additional enforcement that can be done. I'm not sure if that would that area would qualify for uh, speed humps, for an example. Uh, begin. To, to do speed humps or other traffic combing, we ask for uh, buy-in consent from from the surrounding area, so. Okay, okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Then for my uh, final item, um, tonight in Commerce City at Nativity Lutheran Church, there is a rally to stand in solidarity with uh, the black community. Um, this has been a really challenging three weeks for all of us, I know. And um, I feel uh, the black community's anguish and pain and sadness. And um, as their invitations said, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the time is always right to do what is right. So I know I was um, in contact with staff this past week, uh, and I know that Chief Nichols had uh, prepared to answer questions I had last week regarding uh, Commerce City's involvement in the protests downtown. We were part of, of an agreement that um, responds to other communities' needs. But I think what I would like to do instead is I'd like to ask um, my colleagues if we could direct staff and arrange uh, a study session or a special meeting about uh, the new police accountability, accountability bill, our uh, department policies. If you recall, when we were notified that our police department was going to be involved with the Denver Police Department, one of the things in the statement was that home rule would apply. So it's important for us to know what the policies are. I believe it's important for us and for our residents to know what the policies are of our police department, what their rules were when they entered into that, um, into those areas. And also, um, um, we haven't gotten a crime report. I know this came up some time ago, but that would be certainly worth having, plus any information on community uh, training that our officers are involved in and utilization of uh, mental health teams, what kind of um, um, equipment, material that they keep on hand and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think I'm really suggesting, hmm, I don't know if I'm suggesting a study session or a special meeting, but I do think that this is an extremely important issue that, that needs to be discussed. And there are uh, considerable impacts that come along with the police accountability bill. And um, so I'm offering this up. Are you making a motion? Well, my problem is, is that I haven't narrowed it down to whether a study session or a special meeting makes uh, the most sense. My newness is showing. Mr. Sheasley. I'd just be happy to suggest that the, the council member uh, move to have a meeting of some kind. I think um, <laughs> they, they would each have the same function, the, a special meeting uh, when it's scheduled, there, there's a significant amount in there to, to put together and coordinate. So it, it would take um, some legwork to get that together, I believe, not to speak for the chief, but I don't, I don't think I'm wrong. Um, an executive session to the extent that some matters are required to be confidential by law or you need legal advice on certain things could be accounted for in a special meeting um, at some point. So perhaps being vague 
at this point and let us let staff bring back that I'm, I'm speaking like the city manager at this point i i apologize um so i'll let roger or, or the chief say if you would just say a meeting and then we'll come back to you with a suggestion of how to schedule it i think that's uh, an acceptable way to go yes then uh, I would like to move a, a meeting regarding uh, the Commerce City Police Department, Police Accountability Bill, and um, other related issues. I have a motion to direct staff to prepare a meeting for us to discuss the Commerce City Police Department and your recently passed Police Accountability Bill and the Commerce City Police Department's involvement in actions related to IGAs with other departments. Good with that? Yes, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Wadiola. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second to direct staff to have a meeting of some type with us to discuss the Commerce City Police Department, the recently passed uh, police accountability bill and our involvement with uh, supporting other agencies through IGAs. Councilwoman Allen Thomas. Um, yes, I just wanted to um, note it that I didn't, I do not necessarily see a special meeting or, you know, even a study session yet because I'm um, dealing with all the situations we're dealing with now. It, it, we haven't officially got um, or received complaints with the Commerce City Police Department. Um, from what I can see and from what I've heard from residents and constituents um i don't really think it's necessary at this time um like i said i've heard nothing but outstanding positive comments um from the commerce city police department um they were asked to assist from what i was told in denver um and you know that's just my opinion i think right now you know i i see it as if something occurs with the commerce city police department we could possibly use that time to explore their policies but right now you know, I've had no complaints from anybody or constituents or residents about the Commerce City Police Department. Thank you. Councilman Mariola. Yeah, I don't think, uh, <clears throat> I, I kind of second it just because I think uh, um, I want to see what, what we have to do to prepare for that bill when it's signed. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that uh, it didn't take uh, in consideration uh, cities like ours. So there, I, um, so when I when I I'm looking at this further down the the road, maybe at a study session to let the chief and his department and the city manager see what are the things that are gonna that we're gonna have to look into the future. Um, I I think we have a, a, a very good uh, police department. I think uh, the chief has done an amazing job um, with our, our police officers uh, to kind of even go into the community policing that they talk about and they do. Um, so I don't think it's more, it's not for me and, and maybe I, I misinterpreted it, but it's not to say, oh, we have these issues. It's just looking forward and how the city is gonna respond to the law that's gonna be signed in a couple of days um, and how we could and be proactive uh, and seeing what the department's going to need, our justice uh, department's going to need, the courts. So that's why I would like to see the, the, the study session encompass all of that, not saying that we have any complaints on our department or any of that, not looking into that, just seeing what we have to do to move forward because it's coming and it's going to get signed and it's going to affect us. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons I, I second it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Councilwoman Noble. Thank you, Jose. Councilmember Guardiola. Yes, that was exactly my intention. It was simply to get out um, ahead of this information and also um, present our police department to the residents of Commerce City. Also, you know, I feel like I'm in a very privileged position. I. Um, I'm an aging woman who, uh, white woman on top of it, who probably won't 
have any strange encounters and can be safe with that knowledge. But uh, we certainly have um, a diverse community, so it's worth looking at. And in addition, people don't totally understand Commerce City, which is kind of odd in that we don't have human um, services department. We don't oversee the fire department. You know, we don't oversee the schools. So the, uh, but we do oversee the police department via the city manager. So we can all work together and do something positive, continue to do something positive for the community. I think that's really important. So thank you very much, Council Member Gardiel. I understand your position, Council Member Alan Thomas, but this is just to um, reinforce messages, but at the same time, um, ask any questions of them that we may have and how this is going to coordinate, how their policies are going to be able to coordinate with the police accountability bill that Governor Polis is anticipated to pass. And please do keep in mind that that police accountability bill was bipartisan. It was both Democrats and Republicans who voted for that bill in both houses. Thank you. Councilwoman Smith. I just kind of want to reiterate a lot of things that um, Councilman Oriola and Councilwoman Alan Thomas have said. I work with the police department a lot, um, not in the council role, but as a paramedic in the city. And compared to like some of the other cities that are around us, our police department is really, really amazing. Because um, I work with Denver and I work with Aurora as well. And just our police department is really amazing. But I think having a study session to see what's going to be coming is really good for us so that we're not like blindsided by anything that we're all in the know. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah, I support the meeting as well, but I, you know, I, I want to give staff uh, and particularly chief and his team uh, the time to put this together because I, I took uh, Councilwoman Noble's um, motion as you know a fact finding there's unfunded liabilities or unfunded um mandates that are in that bill that that will fall in our lap you know in terms of uh you know chief nichols clearly pointed out some of the uh data retention uh clauses that are in there that will cost us you know in the long run in terms of uh, being able to retain that data in a responsible manner um and you know being able to um Put it out in 45 days and so on and so forth as that bill lays out now i, I was happy that the discussion happened by councilwoman uh, alan thomas because i'm of the same feeling that she is that our our police department does a very good job and i've been proud of them um since you know moving to this community and so um i want to make that clear but also you know understanding where the budget's going to be going in the next 10 5 to 10 years um with these, you know, mandates that come with this is very important for us in our role to understand, you know, what support the uh, police department's going to need to comply with this new mandates, with these new regulations. Um, it, it seems to make sense for us to kind of get in front of that for the city staff to, to work on, um, you know, wrapping their head around it and what they're going to need from us. Um, so we have a better understanding of that. And, and when we, you know, hit our winter budget planning sessions, we'll, we'll be prepared um, to have those discussions about increased funding in certain areas of the, of the um, police department to cover some of these new mandates that are in this bill. Councilwoman Alan Thomas. Yes, and I'd just like to add one thing. As a woman of color, I did reach out personally to um, Chief Nichols. He did address all of my concerns and I would be open, you know, to a study session, but like I said, as a woman of color, I did reach out um, and had concerns as to how um, the situation was handled when they assisted the Denver Police Department. So I, I would be open, you know, to a study session, but like I said, I, I did reach out to Chief Nichols and he did answer and address all of my questions and concerns. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. All right, seeing no other discussion, we have a motion and a second to have a meeting in the future of some type to discuss the Commerce City Police Department, the recently passed yet to be signed police accountability bill and our agreements with other police agencies through IGAs. We'll take a roll call vote. Council Member Madera. 
Yes. Council member Alan Thomas. Yes. Council member Noble. Yes. Council member Wardiola. Yes. Council member Hurt. Yes. Council member Grimes. Yes. Council member Smith. Yes. Mayor President Frank. Yes. Mayor Houston. Yes. Staff of nine to zero. Thank you. Any other council members wishing to bring up anything for administrative council business? Seeing on the next agenda item on our list is the city manager resignation agreement. Looking for a motion and a second to approve the city manager resignation agreement. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I'll motion to approve the city manager resignation agreement. Councilman Hurst. Second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the city manager resignation agreement. Is there any discussion? Seeing no request for discussion, we'll take a roll call vote. Mayor Huseman, uh, Council Member Medair and Council Member Wardiola had uh, raised their hand before you called for the vote. My apologies, I didn't see those come up. Councilman Wardiola. Thank you, Mayor Huseman. Yeah, um, you know, this has been a very tough week seeing this on the agenda, and I definitely want to share my piece on it. Um, I won't be supporting this uh, just for the fact that um, people don't leave their jobs because they hate their jobs or community. People leave their jobs because of supervisors, managers, and bosses. And seeing this agreement to me is not doing justice to the residents of Carmer City. Today in public, uh, public comment, we had a resident that said, we're spending taxpayer money, $200,000 on an agreement of a resignation, right? Earlier this year, I was threatened because I voted with the rest of our, our council 9-0 to do an investigation for 7,500. They accused me of wasteful taxful, taxpayer money. Now we're spending 200,000. I don't think we have done justice and I can't support this. One of the reasons I won't support it is because we haven't put any council policies so that we're not here in three months, six months, or a year. I'll bring forth some policies that I think we need to work on, um, but we haven't even discussed that. We are just discussing this resignation and I think we, we haven't looked at ourselves as a council, as a body, to see why this is really happening. And to me, that's just not right. Um, I believe Mr. McBroom has done a great job. He's not perfect, neither are we, for eight years. He has served the city of Carmer City. And yes, we've heard testaments and gotten letters that he's not doing a good job, but we've also got letters and testaments that he did a great job we choose to look the other way. And to me, I, the cup is always half full. So I won't be supporting this. I think, I just, I can't support this. We all have a role. We have to look in our mirrors and really look down and see, are we really doing this, this the right for our city? Mr. McBroom is not the problem. He has done everything we've asked. And he chooses to leave, and it's his choice. But I won't support this. And again, people don't leave their jobs because they hate their jobs or communities. People leave their jobs because they don't like working 
or their managers, supervisors, or bosses. So I won't be supporting this measure. Thank you. Councilmember there. Yeah, I just would like to take the time to thank um, City Manager McBroom for everything that he's done for the city. You now, chances are, if you've had a new park built by you. City Manager McBroom was leading that. You got a new rec center in your community. That was under the direction of City Manager McBroom. The on ramp to Pena, the widening of Tower Road, the widening of Highway 2. You know, the, the list goes on and on of uh, all the things that we accomplished underneath City Manager McBroom. And, you know, I just want to take the time to let him know that we appreciate everything that he's done for the city and know that he's laid the, the foundation for whoever steps into this role after him. And he's going to be missed. He's going to be dearly missed. Councilman Grimes. Yeah, I just, I want to take a minute to um, echo council member Guardiola's comments. I've had a, a challenging week as well, receiving comments from residents, um, reading things on social media um, about what this resignation agreement is about, why we're here. And um, I, like Mr. Guardiola, will not be supporting this agreement tonight. I think it's fiscally irresponsible of our council to approve an additional $200,000 uh, for Mr. McBroom to leave, um, given the circumstances uh, that have led us here. And uh, I would also like to thank Mr. McBroom for all of his hard work. Um, have appreciated working with him uh, to this point, though it's been short. And, and so, um, yeah, uh, for, for fiscal reasons, and uh, as well as transparency with constituents, I won't be supporting this agreement. Councilwoman Alan Thomas. Yes, and I just wanted to agree also, I will not be supporting um, this motion either on my, I believe like I said, council member um, Guardiola and Councilwoman Grimes pretty much summed it up and it is unfortunate that we had, a, you know, as a new council member, I only had a short time um, to work with uh, the city manager, Brian McBroom, and I think it's unfortunate that it came to this point. Any other requests for discussion? We'll take a roll call vote. Council member Madera. Yes. Council member Alan Thomas? No. Council member Noble? No. Council member Wardiola? No. Council member Hurst? Yes. Council member Grimes? No. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Frank. Yes. Mayor Houston. Yes. Passes five to four. And Mr. Beasley, would you please like to re, uh, chime in on next steps? Thank you, Mayor um, and Council. Um, this resignation agreement uh, provides for a 21 day period uh, for Mr. McBroom to consider it. Um, if accepted, uh, it would be uh, effective on July 6th. Um, I do anticipate that Mr. McBroom will accept it. Um, the next steps for the council will be to uh, determine a process for appointing an interim city manager and beginning a recruitment process should um, the resignation become effective on July 6th. Um, currently, Mr. Tinklenberg is serving as the acting city manager. 
you could choose to allow that for right now for um, that designation to stand and then to schedule a special meeting um, for some time in the next two weeks um, would be my recommendation or to do it on the night of the study session to have a an executive session for purposes of uh, instructing negotiators to identify um, terms for an interim city manager um, effective on July 6th. Um, so, and then at some point, probably at the study session next week, um, begin that process of um, engaging a recruitment firm through a formal request for proposals, uh, most likely. Um, and then, um, so the long and short of it is council could allow the acting city manager to, to stay as is, let Mr. McBroom identify and acting and continue to serve for the next uh, 21 days and um, come up with a plan for the interim um, in the next two weeks, if that's acceptable. I think that may give time unless council wants to do so this evening. Any discussion regarding the comments made by the city attorney? Councilwoman Ellen Thomas. Hi, Robert. I'm just curious. Can you read the uh, resignation um, agreement? May I ask, is there a particular portion of the resignation agreement that you wanted me to address? Um, it's somewhat lengthy. Um, mainly, uh, the uh, like the portion of the amount that we're paying and that mainly the payment portion and the terms of what else we're agreeing to give uh, Brian the city manager sure I will give um, a summary of the agreement I'll, I'll just walk through it it begins with um, recitals kind of identifying the background and that the resignation is occurring without a request that he do so uh, the um, severance amount matches what is in his employment agreement um, had he been terminated uh, without cause or uh, had a request to resign. It is nine months of his current gross salary, um, which is $161,819.42 paid in monthly installments. If Mr. McBroom um, earns salary from another source in the next nine months, um, the amount the city pays would be reduced in that amount. Um, and that is also subject to taxes and withholdings. Um, per city policies and his employment agreement, he's entitled to any accrued but unused annual leave that'll be calculated on the date of his resignation at his hourly rate of $103. Um, and then nine months of family health and dental insurance coverage uh, through COBO, which would mean the city would be paying the portions that the employer and employee would typically pay. Um, Mr. McBroom would agree to be reasonably available to the city um, for the next nine months um, as a consultation type service, um, should the, his knowledge and background be needed for the city. Um, the agreement includes um, a mutual release by the city and it's um, and uh, from Mr. McBroom from um, any claims that they may have against him and then a release um, by Mr. McBroom of various um, generic description of any claims he could have against the city or any individual um, employee officer, um, official or agent. Um, there are some provisions about the Colorado Open Records Act uh, to which this document uh, uh, would address how his personnel files are treated, which would be consistent with the law there's no special treatment there. There's a provision um, regarding disclosures of his employment conditions and the separation of his employment um, to prospective employers and inquiries um, detailing his period of service here and his good standing. Um, and then some general um, terms of the agreement uh, that are, that are uh, kind of boilerplate language. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, seeing no other discussion on this item, we will move on to council reports. Mr. Tinklenberg. 
Yes, sir. I have nothing further right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sheasley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to report that following uh, Council's decision on the Honan building uh, two weeks ago, um, I gave an informal notice to the county um, and the county leadership is discussing uh, potential for other terms that may make the deal more attractive to the city. So I just wanted to give you that update uh, that, that may come back before you um, if it is an attractive item. Um, and um, we'll see what that comes up with in the next week or so. But um, barring anything further, we would formally terminate that in July. Uh, so just an update on, on that. Thank you. And then, uh, of course, council knows the, has discussed the police bill that passed over the weekend um, and is on its way to the governor. It does have some immediate effect. Um, we're working uh, with the police department to make sure that they are fully uh, aware of all those implications and our officers um, are gonna be um, educated uh, under that law as well. It is it is significant for city operations. So that, that work is well underway, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Wadiola. Thank you, Mayor. I had another administrative council business, if that's all right. Uh, I wanted to see if, um, I don't know how to put it in, but to do a, a policy committee with uh, our peers, our council peers, to oversee council policies on how we hold each other accountable, um, also how we treat staff and our staff members. Um, again, with the majority voting Mr. McBroom's uh, resignation agreement, I think it's, it's, it's time that we look at ourselves and hold ourselves accountable. Um, so I'd like to motion to set up a committee um, within ourselves to look at council policy, um, staff policy and city manager policy or our employees so we can move forward um, and we're not here next year. All right, uh, motion to create a council policy committee to review all council policies and how we interrelate um, with all of our staff. Councilwoman Ellen Thomas. I'd like to second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Noble. I, I raised my hand to second it. I do think that uh, policy is very critical and in particular, when we get a new city manager that we don't uh, repeat uh, the same issues again. So uh, how do we do that? We'll have to look at the policies and maybe there is even policies that we haven't been utilizing that uh, need to remind ourselves that we do in addition to new policies. Thank you. I have a motion and a second for this committee. Any other discussion? We will take a roll call vote. Councilmember Madera. Yes. Councilmember Allen Thomas. Yes. Councilmember Noble. Yes. Councilmember Wardiola. Yes. Councilmember Hurst. Yes. Councilmember Grimes. Yes. Council Member Smith. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem Frank. Yes. Mayor Huseman. Yes. Passes nine to zero. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if it please the council, I would um, suggest that um, I work with Mr. Wardiola to come up with the language that would outline what this committee is. Typically, what I was going to say is the. Um, the council committees are identified in the council policies themselves with a little bit of detail as to their scope. So if that's acceptable, I, I would go ahead with that and bring it up for the next, the, the July 6th council meeting to amend the policies to kind of formally constitute that. And then you can appoint um, people to do that. Any issues with that? Uh, moving on to reports, are there any council members that need to make a report? Okay. 
Councilman Wadiola. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, this week we met with the Cultural Council, just uh, kind of a quick update. Um, because uh, Music in the Park was uh, canceled, um, we are going to be doing the uh, virtual music in the park. We uh, are still contracting the same bands uh, that will be playing on the exact same dates. Uh, we're going to be working with staff. So basically, it'll be a Facebook or YouTube or Instagram. We don't know yet. Uh, watch party with those same bands. And those same bands will be our live bands next year. Um, we're working with that. So that way, this kind of just a teaser for our community and our residents that these are the same bands um, that will be for 2021. So please, uh, once we get that flyer out and get all the details ironed out, please share on your social media sites and uh, to your network. Uh, that way we get some good uh, viewing. Thank you. Any other reports? All right, I have a brief one. I met with uh, Mark Bush um, last week. He wanted to show me the plans he has for developing our 120th Avenue. I understand he's been in conversation with staff on getting, on getting that done. And there's an IGA that um, will be considered for city funding to make those improvements. Um, had a video conference with the CDOT director about the 60th Avenue and Vasquez options that we were presented last week. Uh, we are scheduled to meet her out at the site uh, probably next Tuesday morning to talk about that. And that is the extent of my report. Any other reports last minute alibis? Seeing none, next on the schedule is an executive session. Um, executive session was to continue the conversation over the sales and use tax rebate agreement for the reunion metropolitan district is there anybody wishing to make a motion to go into executive session councilman hurst just want to throw out there is this um you know, we had quite the discussion on that already and we were looking for and, and voted for a future meeting on that and so it seems to me that it would make sense to delay uh, any executive session um, until we have the, 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 the that further discussion uh, sorry escape me for a second but until we have that further discussion I'm, I'm not prepared to um, ask somebody or give direction to a negotiator until I understand all the details necessary Good. Councilman Wadiola. I echo and agree. I think especially with the, the dollar figures, right? I think we, we need to get those numbers um, before we make uh, further decisions. Any other comments on that? All right, all good comments. I fully agree with that. Seeing no motion to go into executive session. Um, that was the last item for the city council meeting. We will adjourn to the NIGID meet meeting at this time. Uh, call the meeting to order. Will the secretary please take the roll? Excuse me, Mayor and members of council, give me just a moment to get my system uh, over to the NIG. I apologize. Chair uh, Huseman? Present. Vice Chair Frank. Present. Board Member Madera. Present. Board Member Alan Thomas. Present. Board Member Noble. Present. Board Member Wardiola. Present. Board Member Present. Board Member Grimes. Present. Board Member Smith. Present. 